Transportation California was started, well, 1990. It was started by Dave Watts, who was the CEO at Granite at the time, Bert Sandman, who was the CEO at Tykert. They got together and said, you know what? The price, the, the tax on fuel in the state of California is 18 cents a gallon, and it does not raise enough money to support the transportation improvement process in the state. We cannot keep the system, we could not keep the system intact with that kind of a revenue stream. So, so Dave and Bert organized the industry in those days to try to raise funds, increase funding for transportation. That is the sole purpose of Transportation California. It is, for the most part, industry driven, industry supported, aligned with labor, because frankly, labor's got the political contacts that are necessary, but m almost all the money comes from contractors who are interested, one, in keeping the system, the transportation system healthy, and two, keeping their business healthy. So the, over, the, over the course of the next 15 years or so, the two primary pieces of legislation that were, that were uh, achieved is Prop 42. Prop 42 was a, an initiative run by the industry, Transportation California, and the Alliance for Jobs primarily to take the sales tax associated with purchasing uh, gasoline and diesel, gasoline, take that sales tax revenue and earmark it for transportation. Today, the price, of, the tax on gasoline is roughly 37 cents. 37 or 39? 39. 39 and a half cents. Had it not been for the efforts of Transportation California, we would have an 18 cent a gallon revenue stream coming off the price of fuel completely and utterly inadequate to try to keep the system going. So it, it, is, it, it was and it is the efforts on, of, the, of the construction industry which has driven that legislation, that initiative. Secondarily, that still is not enough. I can absolutely assure you that's not enough. It's not enough to do the job. And it's not just me talking, it's the needs assessment published by, or published by the California Transportation Commission in 2011 that lays it out very clearly. There are, there are boatloads of unmet needs relative to the system. Interestingly enough, along that same line, Secretary of Transportation about two months ago published after a year of thinking about, you know, the vision for transportation in California, published a document called his vision, uh, no doubt supported by the governor, and in that document, he said clearly that the condition of the roads in the state of California are number 48 out of a list of 50 states. Our roads are, I mean, we are two states from being the worst road conditions in the state, and that is a product of inadequate funding. Now, we have actually made probably made a few gains in over the last five or six years. And the reason for that is that following on the Prop, uh, Prop 46 initiative, Transportation California, along with the Alliance for Jobs, uh, sponsored, uh, sponsored another initiative called Proposition 1B. It was a $20 billion transportation bond measure which, which put about three to four billion dollars a year into the system that otherwise to, to, to supplement the, the revenues coming off of the, of the fuel taxes. Absent Proposition 1B, we would not have been able to make the gains that we've made in the system and the maintenance of the system or some of the congestion relief that we've been able, that the, that the system has seen, but as a product of the Proposition 1B money. I will tell you that Truthfully, once Proposition 1B was passed, Transportation California kind of went to sleep. It went, back to, it went back into hibernation. Everybody was happy. The industry was roaring. We thought we were making progress uh, on the system, improving the system, and we were. And about four years ago, I took a telephone call from Dan Hemmick. Dan Hemmick is the CEO at C.C. Myers Construction. 
And I'm embarrassed to say that he made it very clear to me that we were, as an industry, heading for our own fiscal cliff. And that fiscal, fiscal cliff was the Proposition 1B money would sunset at the end of 2012. And that is exactly what has happened. And for those of you in the, in the business that are out build, have a, in the business of building highways, you've no doubt seen the, the level of jobs being advertised drop off in, into 2013 and certainly into 2014. And that is because the one B money has already been spent. There may be a few jobs that are still being funded from that revenue stream, but we are literally, li we are literally being funded. The system is being funded and maintained almost exclusively today from fuel taxes. We have no other, we have no other revenue stream that, of substance other than fuel taxes. So the question then becomes, what are we gonna do about this? Are the legislators gonna do it for us? I don't think so. I don't think they would have done it had it not been for Transportation California and the Alliance for Jobs in the past, and I don't think they're gonna do it without us helping them see the way. And what's very interesting, what's very interesting for me is that there's no doubt, there's no doubt that this, this legislation is needed. This increase in funding is needed. You can't talk to a legislator that won't agree with it. I can tell you that. What's interesting is you talk to a Democrat, the Democrats will say, yeah, 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 we need some, we need this, you're right, we need to increase funding. You know, if you can bring us a few Republican votes, you know, we're on board with this. And you talk, to most Republicans, you talk to a Republican, they say, yeah, you're right, you're absolutely right, we need to do this, but we need to get the money out of a social program. And so the prospect of actually putting this legislation together to do what's necessary, to keep this vital part of our economy intact is a real struggle politically. And there's no question that it needs to be done politically, but there is, it is a very difficult uphill battle to try to get it done. Uh, there is talk right now about a vehicle miles traveled tax to replace the fuel, the fuel tax, which interesting, Interestingly enough, just some statistics around fuel usage, the gasoline fuel usage in the state of California is about 16 billion gallons a year. That's down 8% from the high at 2005. My question is how much of that decline is just due to the general economic uh, condition and how much of it's due to more fuel efficiency? Probably a little bit of both, if I had to guess. So it's down 8%. Diesel fuel's actually gone up, diesel fuel usage. So, there is a theme out there amongst most politicians that I've talked to, and certainly the administration, is that the fuel tax, uh, fuel tax is not a viable long-term revenue stream. Probably true over the long run. But in the short run, I'm not sure that's probably entirely true. So the administration wants to move to a vehicle miles traveled program of some kind. The, the, that will take time. It's got privacy issues associated with it. It's like, how do you do it? How do you collect the money? It's great about fuel taxes, you pay in advance. You pay the tax before you drive the miles. And any, kind of, any other kind of program, uh, you're gonna drive the miles and then hopefully somebody's gonna be able to collect it. In the meantime, what do we do? What do we do as a state? What do we do as an as, as a, as a industry? And therein lies what Transportation California is trying to accomplish. And I'm not gonna lead you through that, but Will Kempton is. So the current challenges are simple. You've already heard uh, Bill talk about them. Prop 1B is over. Uh, $13 billion spent, and spent very efficiently, frankly. It was a program that was well managed by the California Transportation Commission and effectively delivered by Caltrans and the other regional agencies around the state. $13 billion was put out on the street relatively quickly. Thanks to, well, I shouldn't say thanks to the recession, but due to the recession, there was, uh, there was a lot of competition. The industry performed extremely well, got great bids. We actually were able to redirect a lot of the savings to additional projects. That $13 billion leveraged total project costs of $35 billion. Now that, you talk about, the public doesn't know this, but if you talk about the effectiveness of a program in terms of, and, and, and by the way, figure that for every 35, uh, for every billion dollars of that 35 billion dollars, we're talking about 17 or 18,000 jobs. It's, it, it was a very, very positive program. It helped the economy rebound. 
Uh, it built a lot of facilities and it, it, it worked. And so um, uh, that program is essentially done. There are projects that have been funded with that are wrapping up. Uh, and that is problematic for uh, us, it's problematic for the system, and it's problematic for, uh, obviously, all of you uh, as you uh, work in the industry. Decline of gas tax revenues, the purchasing power has uh, been declining. Uh, it's about uh, nine, uh, the 18 cents, it's about worth half of what it was the last time the gas tax was increased in the mid-90s in California. But the most significant factor, and, and Bill, I think it is the fuel efficiency, that's why we're seeing a drop, uh, a precipitous drop in gas tax revenues. Uh, we're seeing more and more of the, uh, the fleet uh, uh, not paying anything for the use of our roadways, and, and that's problematic. And then we know that uh, money that was put into the transportation coffers by taxpayers has been diverted. The state uh, gas tax is constitutionally protected, so it can't be, it, it can be borrowed, but it can't be taken. But anything else, they took. And um, that's one of the problems with the truck weight fees we'll talk about in a moment. But the fact of the matter is there's a lot of outstanding dollars out there. And this diversion of, of transportation revenues has been a real problem. And there is a lack of state and federal solutions. Uh, it, it's very, it, the, the situation, the environment in Washington and in, in Sacramento is different. It's, 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 it's the toughest situation that I've encountered in my 40 years in the business. It really is a different situation. So what do we do? We know the need is substantial. We know that the system continues to deteriorate. Our industry is suffering. We put together a larger coalition, just, not just us, not just uh, the industry. We brought in public agencies and other stakeholders. And these are the options that we have looked at. There you go. We did look at a gas tax increase. And I'll tell you why we didn't go that route. We looked at a new statewide bond measure. I'll tell you why we didn't go that route. We looked at cap and trade funding because, as Mr. Bell, or Senator Bell points out, uh, cap and uh, uh, mobile sources produce 38 percent of greenhouse gas emissions. So it makes sense if we're trying to reduce those emissions that we would invest 38 percent of the revenues in the transportation and, and mobile sector. Uh, we've looked at lowering voter threshold on local measures. Currently, there's a two-thirds vote requirement for those local sales tax programs. They've been pretty successful even with that, that threshold but it would be much better if we could lower that threshold like we've done on education to 55% and see that drop and see more uh, counties being able to approve it. I'll tell you about that as well. Vehicle license and registration fees, we looked at those. We looked at a diesel excise tax increase. So why did we select the vehicle license fee? And uh, here are some of the reasons. We did extensive voter research over the past two years. We raised, uh, we thought that raising additional dollars through an increase in the vehicle license fee was fair and equitable. The vehicle license fee, by the way, is an in-lieu property tax that you pay at the time of registration. It's based, uh, it's a percentage based on the value of the vehicle. So it's, it's, not, it's not a regressive tax either because if you're uh, fairly wealthy or, or have a, an expensive car, you're going to be paying more. If you're driving an old clunker, uh, if you're uh, in the lower income level, uh, you're going to be paying less. But uh, we thought this would be a pretty good source. This is, by the way, the dreaded car tax that uh, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger uh, used to uh, hammer Gray Davis when uh, they had the recall going on. So we knew there was going to be a problem with that, but we did some early polling and we actually found it somewhat encouraging. And then there was so little support for the other options, it made the VLF look better from that perspective as well. So a draft measure was filed with the Attorney General in November to obtain title and summary. So. Title and summary uh, and the fiscal impact was received back from the Attorney General uh, in January. The language wasn't bad except for one thing. It talked about transportation projects. It didn't talk about repairs. Here it was, the California Road Repairs Act, and they didn't mention that the money was going for road repairs. It just said for transportation projects. Uh, that was enough, we think, to sink it. Uh, we didn't get to a real good response. We retested that in a, a new round of polling, and uh, based on the result, the decision was made to uh, put the measure on hold. Uh, advanced loan repayments. I talked about the fact that they borrowed a lot of transportation dollars over the last 10 years during a multitude of uh, budget crises. Well, uh, there's about uh, one and a half to two and a half billion dollars of uh, outstanding loans, depending on where you start the date for those loans. Um, we want to get those back. The governor, to his credit, did include $350 million of, a of an advance repayment uh, in this year's budget. 
we want to see that accelerated. Uh, I think it probably makes better sense that we would spread that out over a couple of years so that we can have some sort of a, a steadier stream of revenue, and so that's, that's what we're kind of looking at. Uh, cap and trade, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, implementing a VMT pilot. Uh, Bill talked about all of the problems associated with a road user charge or a mileage-based user fee, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, we need, if we're going to move in that direction, which uh, you know, this administration appears to want to go, uh, and a lot of other states are talking about this as well, if we're going to do it, let's do it. So we've introduced SB 1077, which is a bill that provides the authority for the Department of, actually the State Transportation Agency, to uh, institute a pilot for uh, the, the, uh, this particular uh, program effort. There's a possibility of a $5 billion bond program for transportation next year. Uh, and uh, we uh, certainly know that we need to have reform measures uh, in place, better accountability, efficiency, and innovation to uh, satisfy the concerns that the public has expressed regarding <clears throat> the expenditure of the dollars. P3s, public-private partnerships. We have draft language, which we're going to be discussing at a conference next week with a whole bunch of stakeholders there. We've uh, proposed legislation uh, to uh, make uh, uh, CMGC uh, a procurement method available to uh, uh, some of the regional agencies, Caltrans has a pilot uh, program uh, already authorized for six projects. We want to broaden that, so we've got legislation going on that. We're looking at alternative bid procedures for equipment purchases, a whole range of things that can improve the efficiency for how we do business. Let me just briefly jump over the uh, cap and trade stuff here. Governor included $850 million in his budget for cap and trade funding for this year. A, a big chunk of it goes to high-speed rail, $250 million directly to high-speed rail, $50 million for what he calls connectivity projects for uh, transit and conventional rail that connect to high-speed rail. Uh, there's so many competing interests on cap and trade, it's really a tough uh, road to hoe, as uh, Senator Bell could tell you. Uh, there's a chamber lawsuit that challenges the uh, cap and trade revenues. Was, were, were, can, can the legislature uh, really do what they've done? Uh, can the Air Resources Board, more correctly, really do what it's done to uh, implement this fee? Uh, there was a carbon tax proposal you may have read about coming out of uh, Senator Steinberg. He was going to uh, uh, increase the gas tax by 15 cents. It was going to be the equivalent of a 15 cent increase in the gas tax. Well, the public does not like the gas tax, and neither do politicians. It fell flat, so that's not going anywhere. Uh, so we're going to be looking to work with Senator Steinberg and the governor uh, and people like uh, Senator Jim Bell, who heads the budget process in the Senate, uh, so that uh, we can see how these dollars get, uh, get divided up. Uh, the uh, the uh, distribution under Steinberg was 40% uh, going to affordable houses and sustainable communities. And by the way, sustainability, climate change, is uh, what, whatever you think about it, is the word of the day in, uh, in uh, Sacramento. Uh, so anything that we're going to be doing with transportation is going to have to take that into account. So you can see this, the percentage split that they were proposing there, but there were some off-the-top uh, expenditures that were uh, also proposed as part of this. So $610 million, and Senator Bell said $2 billion, uh, 2 to $4 billion. Before you get to dis uh, dividing that money up, you're going to have to take $610 million off the top for these purposes that you see uh, here. So that's kind of the situation in Sacramento right now. We've had some very uh, good success with uh, our truck weight fee bills. We've got two bills in, uh, in Sacramento right now, uh, SB 1418 by Senator Desaulnier. We've got uh, AB 2728 by uh, Assembly Members uh, uh, Linder and uh, uh, Perea. Uh, both will return those wait fees to the state highway account. Uh, there is a sunset on the assembly version of the bill. Uh, there is no sunset on the Senate version of the bill. So uh, that uh, part of it's good. We're working with the Department of Finance. Just met with them yesterday, as a matter of fact, to uh, look about uh, to talk about the uh, re uh, getting those loans uh, paid back earlier. So we are making some progress. I think it's going to be a very uphill battle. I think we may have some success on the uh, side of getting the loans repaid. Uh, but it's going to be, uh, I think, an uphill slog for the uh, return of the wait fees. We'll look at the bond uh, program uh, for next year, uh, whether that makes some sense. We did test that 
In January, 54% uh, of the respondents said they would support a $5 billion bond for transportation purposes, but then we'll be pressed to identify a source of debt service for those funds if we decide to go forward. No way we could do that this year. The governor uh, has uh, basically issued uh, his uh, directives, uh, nothing on the ballot to uh, save uh, the potential of a water bond, uh, and obviously that's a very important issue too. So here's our strategy going forward. We got to inform and educate the public. I can't overestimate the importance of this uh, because we know that they uh, don't think their dollars are being well spent. Clearly, the governor has to be a partner in all of this, so uh, we are working uh, diligently to get a meeting set up with him for some of our uh, leaders. Um, we need to cultivate the transportation advocates in the state legislature, as I talked about at the outset. Uh, certainly strengthen our coalition, and I think that uh, Bill's going to talk a little bit about that. But we've got to tell our story. We've got to tell people the good things that we are doing, uh, and we're just not getting that word out. So with that, I always like to close by saying it is up to us. If we don't do it, nobody else will. 